So I want to go see the kids movie Elemental at the movie theaters. And there's some things that I want to talk to you guys about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I am Keandra Jackson, licensed marriage and family therapist. I recently went to go see the movie Elemental all the way by myself. I was the only one in the movie theater, okay, who didn't have any kids with me looking like a weirdo. But nevertheless, I watched that whole entire kid movie and it literally gave me some lessons that I wanna share with y'all too. Per usual, if you're new here, hey! But if you're returning, you already know how my review videos go. I have to give y'all this disclaimer because if you have not watched Elemental, I need for you to press pause. Go on over to the movie theaters or wherever it's streaming now and go ahead and watch it because they're going to be spoiler alerts all up in in through and around here and I don't want you mad at me. Before we get into it, comment below one if you've seen the movie but also what were your thoughts about the movie? So I have been a lover of kid movies for years. I literally used to take my young nephew with me Every time a new kid video would come out, I would take him to the movies. And so this has been my thing for years. So even as a grown woman, adult, who don't even have children of her own as of now, literally, I will go to the movies. I will sit here and watch it on Disney+. Plus. I will do whatever needs to be done in order to see these movies. But let's get into it. The first thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about or the lesson that I've seen in Elemental is to operate in your own gifts, your own talent, your own purpose, and your own power. Every single element throughout the whole entire movie had a purpose. And to be honest, every single element also had a power. Some of those powers had good components to them. Some of those powers had bad components to them. Nevertheless, it was powerful. So let me give you an example of fire, right? Some of the pros of fire was that she was able, we're talking about Amber. <laughs> you get it, Amber? Okay. She was able to melt things. She was able to create things. And those were some positive aspects of literally being a flame of fire. But there were also some cons. And that was everything and everybody that she touched could potentially turn into flames, blow up, and burn up. So what I learned from this was that it's so important to just uniquely be yourself. Essentially, be you, boo. You cannot operate in other people's lanes. You cannot do what other people do. Because if you do, it can literally be life-threatening to you. Literally the example, if fire, Amber, went and touched water, she can literally extinguish herself. So this meant she needed to understand her limits. She needed to understand her boundaries. She needed to know what she could and could not do. And all of those things were important for each and every element. But the whole goal of this was not to try to be someone else, but to literally operate in her own power, know her own strengths and her own weaknesses. And I think the most interesting thing about this was that each element had its own sense of power. But all of that power showed up in different forms, right? Like even if we think about water, you know, you have liquid, you have ice, you have moist, you have droplets, you have all of these different forms of water that can literally happen. But essentially, it's still water. We know that if we melt ice, it's going to be water, right? And so at the core of it all, understanding that you have power, understanding that it comes in different forms. And again, it doesn't make you any less powerful just because you switch and change into different forms. And I like to think about that in our own lives, in our own purpose, in our own power, in our own lane, when we are trying to be something, when we are trying to do something, when we are trying to operate on a different level, it's important for us to realize that we don't have to do what everybody else is doing. We don't have to be how everybody else is acting. We just need to show up in the way that God already made us to be. That is enough within itself. One of the other things that I thought was really, really cool about this. So Ember was actually the daughter of a basically like an immigrant, <laughs> an immigrant flame who came to a different town to start a whole new life. And so she was supposed to take on the family business and follow in her father's footsteps and do all of those things. But one of her gifts and her talents was being able to mold and shape and make new things out of other things. 
For example, when she was at her boo's house and they were, she was meeting her boo's family, she encountered a situation at the dinner table where her boo's mother or her future mother-in-law, we'll call it, <laughs> actually broke a glass. And she said, it's okay, I'll fix it. And with her being water, she was able to get all of the pieces together. She sat around and glued it. She did all of these things, blew into it, made it hot and all of this stuff. And she created a new vase out of the broken pieces. And so this was so powerful to me because all of the family members who were at the dinner table were blown away. They were like, wow, how did you do that? Whoa, this is so dope, this is so unique. And she's just like, it's what I do all the time. Like, this is nothing to me, like, what's up? And so it really just spoke to the fact that some of the things that we have, some of the gifts, some of the talents, some of the things that we can do, it comes so easy to us that other people, are their minds are blown when they see us operate and be able to do things with so much ease and less effort. And so it was just a powerful representation of how when you operate in your lane and when you do what you're supposed to do, you're able to impact people on a different level and you're able, they're able to see your worth and your desire. And she even got into like an internship at a glass making company because of her efforts and because of her energy. So it was just a powerful explanation about how once again to operate in your gifts, your talents, your purpose, and your power. Second thing that I learned or a lesson that I learned out of this movie called Elemental is managing your negative emotions and dealing with difficult people. When Ember was at her father's shop, because again, she was being groomed to take over the shop, the family business, all of those things, she was literally a flame. And so she would get so mad and so frustrated when people would push her buttons, when they would break stuff in the shop, when they would try to light little flickers and flames that they didn't purchase and buy. She would get so mad to the point where she will almost literally turn purple and do like this thing where she literally explodes. And all of the things around her, of course, because she's a flame, gets burned, broken, messed up, and all of those things. And her father would always say, when you're able to manage that anger that you got on the inside of you, then you'll be ready to actually take over the shop. And so it was just a valuable lesson how we need to be managing our negative emotions. And so this is one of the things that I have been teaching people for years, and it is that anger is a secondary emotion. Typically, it means that you're never mad just to be mad. Uh -uh. There's something deeper, there's something underneath, there's something that we need to get to the root cause of, of what that anger is. So most people are angry because they're lonely. They're angry because they were disrespected. They're angry because they were sad. They're angry because fill in the blank. And so for her and in this situation, she really was expressing that anger and that frustration in her little boo, her little water boo friend, <laughs> whatever his name is, I can't even think of it at this time she was able or he was able to help her realize that the reason you're feeling all of these emotions is just an internal indicator to you that something is off and you need to pay a little bit more attention to it to get to the root cause of it. So she wind up figuring out the reason why she would get so mad and so explosive was because she really didn't want to take over the shop like she thought she did or even like her father thought that she should. And so she didn't know how to express that. She didn't know how to have a conversation with him about it. She didn't know how to go about that process. She suppressed all of that frustration, that anger, that resentment, all of those things because she didn't want to let her parents down. She said nothing and she literally exploded every single time. And so I've seen throughout this movie, she will literally try self-soothing techniques or positive coping skills. She would try to run and go downstairs in the basement and say, okay, let me take some deep breaths. Let me calm down. Let me take a moment. Let me distance myself from people. Let me try to bring myself back down because I know that if I get to a 10, I will literally blow up this whole restaurant. So that was another valuable lesson that I saw is learning how to manage your negative emotions because if not, you can literally blow up on other people and not only do you harm them, but you also internally harm yourself. The next one, the third lesson that I saw 
and elemental was people pleasing behavior. Amber was the queen of people pleasing, meaning all she did was want to please her mom and her dad. And understandably so, because again, they left their hometown. He left his family in order to pursue something that was more safe and more secure. And before Ember was born, you know, his wife was, is also a flame. She had a little pregnancy belly. So he left to find a new place. And then when they got to the new place, which was called Element City, they were able to establish this place and build and start a business and start a store and be able to provide for themselves and all of that. And so she understood that her father came from humble beginnings and that he sacrificed a lot for her to be able to have the things that she had. So understandably so, she didn't wanna let him down. But this was to the extreme because she never verbalized wanting and desiring or even pursuing her own dreams and her own passion. So again, once again, she's suppressing everything on the inside of her to please her mom, to please her dad, never saying anything because all she wanted to hear was essentially job well done. And so throughout this entire movie, every time she did something positive, every time she did something good, her dad would literally say, good daughter, you're my good daughter. And I think that that affirmed her, but also she longed for that time and time again, because it was reassuring to her that she was on quote unquote, the right track. And she didn't want it to ever be a situation where he didn't see her as being a good daughter. So to bring it to current times and to bring it to regular folks world, we do this all the time. We suppress our gifts, we suppress our talents, we suppress our emotions, we don't pursue the things that we're supposed to pursue, we don't achieve our goals, we don't do all of those things because we're so fearful of what someone else will say. You're not good enough, you should do this. I did this for you, so you should do this for the family. Sacrifice this, look this way, do this, don't go here. All of these messages are sent our way. And so even in the midst of having people pleasing tendencies, we have to break out of that because at the end of the day, you are literally going to hurt yourself internally trying to please all of the people around you when you're not even pleasing yourself. Remember how when you're on an airplane and they say, put your mask on first before you go and try to help other people? Put your own mask on first before you try to fulfill and help other people and do what they want you to do. You have to do what you are supposed to do. You have to do what God put you on this earth to do. You have to do the things that are on the inside of you. And if you don't, this is where people get sick, physically sick. This is when people miss missions and goals. And this is when they get to be 40, 50, 60, 70 plus years old. And they look back on their life and say, dang, I wish I would have went back to school. I wish I would have went and got that degree. I wish I would have had that child. I wish I would have got married. I wish I would have started that business. I wish I would have not listened to my father who said this or not listened to my mother who tried to project those things onto me. We have to live our own entire life. And so this show, this aspect of the show really showed me that people pleasing behavior is still a major thing that so many people deal with that needs to be fixed. And also, and also even within the people pleasing arena, one of the things that I saw with Ember and her family was that not speaking your truth will make things worse. Some of y'all catch that later, not speaking your truth and being truthful will make things worse. So when she went downstairs, because they were having a big sale at their family business, right? It was like their biggest sale of the year, the red dot sale or whatever they called it, right? She was being inundated with all of these customers, people wanting to buy things. She was trying to run it herself to show her dad that she was ready to take over the family business. She got so frustrated <laughs> that she ran downstairs trying to maintain her anger and she wind up exploding. She busted all, bursted all of the pipes right and so now remember she's fired now water is gushing through the family business we know that if water touches her it can be extinguished she can be let out she can literally die and cease to exist and so instead of telling her father the truth hey dad i got angry i bursted the pipes down there now the city inspector came who happens to be my future boo <laughs> and he's also water <laughs> He came, he wrote us up on some citations and some things that we needed to fix. She could have just came clean. 
Okay, she could have just came clean, but she lied. She chased the dude all the way down to city hall. He wouldn't submit the paperwork. And then she tried to have all these secret meetings and fix it herself. And every time she did, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And so it just reminded me and showed me that speaking your truth has so much power. When you have to go to a lie, when you have to keep lying, you have to keep making up another lie to cover that one up and making up another lie to cover that up. And it just keeps going and going and going. And then ultimately you can't keep the lie up anymore and you have to come clean. But by that time, it's so raggedy. It's so much going on. It's so much happening that you feel like you can't even do it because you know how hurtful this will be to the people that you essentially let down in the first place. So speak your truth. Speak it often, don't lie, because if you do, things could be a lot worse than they need to be. So the next thing, number four, the fourth lesson that I learned from watching Elemental was to take risk and do the things that scare you. Now, it's too much to go into, but essentially Amber, who is a flame, a fire, wind up dating somebody who was water, right? She dated someone who was completely different than her and she was scared out of her mind. She was like, I can literally make you boil <laughs> and you can extinguish me and we both would die, right? So dating someone who was different than her was a whole thing. And not just because they were just different, but it was because her dad had a long standing hatred and discrimination against people that were water that he felt like they were always trying to suppress them and you know uh, get over on them and water them down so to speak and what i really learned about this was literally throughout this whole movie there was so much discrimination y'all <laughs> i mean it's a kids movie but literally if you look at it there was so much quote unquote racism and discrimination throughout this whole entire thing it was like if you did not fit in with a certain group of people because you were different because you look different because you have different uh where you live in different places and you have different ways that you do life we are going to push you outward and to the side and you can't be here and you can't do this, right? It reminded me of segregation. It reminded me of slavery. It reminded me of all of these things because even Ember wanted to go see this flower called Vesetaria or something, right? And so she went there with her dad. Again, they're both flames, they're both fire. And there was a sign that said, no fire allowed. That reminded me of like colored only signs or like white only signs, you know? And so they, didn't, they couldn't even get into this little museum to see the flower because they were discriminated against, right? And so they learned very early on that there are certain parts of town we don't go to, there are certain places we don't go to because we're not welcome and we're gonna stay in our community with a whole bunch of other fire and flames and we just gonna stay over here. We're not even gonna go to the main place. And so even when she met her boo, who happens to be water, he lived in the main city. He lived in like this high rise apartment. Like he basically was kind of like a rich white kid essentially. <laughs> and she was like a poor little black girl. That's kind of like how I saw it. And so their life and their lifestyles were very different. But even though they were very different, I think they got along very well and they saw greatness in each other. They saw uniqueness in each other. And eventually they wind up falling in love and all of that stuff. But we'll talk about that in a second too. Also within this whole taking risk and doing things that scare you because Amber and her little water boo got into a situation they started like dating and getting to know one another and he fell in love with her and she was basically denying it because she didn't want the blowback and the smoke because she knew that her father was not going to be okay with her dating someone who was water she didn't even tell him that she loved him when he said it to her you know so taking risks and doing things and telling people I love you even when it feels scary is a risk that you may want to take if that's something that you want to do. To modernize it and to bring it back to the whole human side, it just reminded me of how it's important for us to hone in on our craft. It's important for us to take opportunities, you know, once again, because she was so good at creating new things with her hands and building glass and formulating new things out of broken things. She wind up having an amazing opportunity to go outside of the city, which was a little bit further away than what 
her and her family anticipated, but she had the opportunity to do an internship, to learn how to be under and work under the biggest glass companies, you know, out there. And so she had this opportunity. And if she was so scared to not take this opportunity, she would have just been living in poverty and <laughs> been living with her parents and miserable essentially, but she had the help of her water brew and a whole bunch of other people to eventually say, no, go, go ahead and go try this out. See what happens. And if it doesn't work out, you can come home. But if it does work out, you have the potential and the opportunity to do something so great within our family, so great to change this flame generation that it will change the trajectory of us for forever. So her dad giving her the blessing of saying, no go, we'll be fine. I can still run the shop here. We can still do what we gonna do, but just go pursue your dreams was a huge one. And last but not least, number five, I don't think this is really a lesson, but it was something that I noticed throughout this whole entire movie. So this movie is actually rated PG. And I start thinking like, why is a kid's movie rated PG? Why is it not rated G? <laughs> but I very quickly understood why this is rated PG, parental guide because they threw in little innuendos, any many little sexual comments that I was like, hold on. Even if I did have a kid and wanted them to see this movie, I would be like, er, did they really just say that? Hold on. Because one of the things that I noticed was that they really did not have to include fire and water, getting into a romantic situation and kissing and dating and being like having that be a underlying storyline. I feel like they should have just really focused on friendship, not a romantic relationship, but literally a platonic friendship and how you can have friends who look very different than you and operate very different than you and have more money or less money and have different powers and components to them and how you can still be friends. I think that that is more of a kid friendly type of movie and what they should have done, but they went the whole romantic route, which made it a little, little much for me. And also what took it a little step further and I was like, okay, they doing too much now. At the end, when Amber was going off to go to her internship in a different city to be a glass maker or creator or whatever you want to call it. The dad literally said, go ahead and be, go ahead and go. It's fine. Me and, me and your mom here can get into a little bit of hanky panky. What? <laughs> did this cartoon, did this cartoon movie just say hanky panky? Hanky Panky is a sexual, like kids watching this did not need to hear about no hanky or no panky. And to be honest with you, kids don't even know what that is or they shouldn't even know what that is, right? So it puts parents and it puts adults who do take their kids to go see this movie in a very interesting situation because what if a kid said, well, mom or dad or uncle or auntie, what's hanky panky? And now you have to explain to them what this is when they may not even be ready for that sexual type of conversation. So it's interesting that this was a thing, but I think Disney and Pixar and whatever other platforms are out there, they just need to be a little bit more cautious and a little bit more aware of the things that they include in these movies. While I enjoyed the movie, because my final review was that it's a good movie. I absolutely would recommend it. You should go see it. It was good. Even as an adult, I was sitting there and I chuckled a lot because I thought, you know, certain elements were funny when they, you know, it was just a really gritty good movie. And so clearly I walked out of there with thinking about some lessons that can be applicable to real life that I wanted to share with you guys today. But thank you so much for taking the time to watch this review. If you want to take your kid, go ahead and take them. If you want to go by yourself, I would recommend that too. But I appreciate you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, stay connected to all of the weekly videos that I have coming your way. And I will see you next time. Bye.